that you enjoyed a phenomenal week. I don't even know where to start. I'm so excited to share this video with you. This is all about my 2015 empties. If you've ever wondered what project panning can do for you, what it can do for your backup stash, what seasonal panning can do for you, you're gonna love this video because I am completely blown away with what I was capable of finishing thanks to panning looks, um, participating in seasonal panning challenges all through last year because oh this is a big number so let's just get into it without further ado okay so my grand total i went through and counted up my empties all through last year kind of wrote down what my favorites were to share with you so you can see you know what i was reaching for out of my backup stash what i wanted to you know repurchase if i needed to repurchase it that kind of thing so my grand total this grand total is only in makeup and body wash. I counted body wash because I did have a backup stash last year. I thought it would be pertinent as far as moving products out of my collection. So my grand total, $1,024.16. Holy craziness. <laughs> Just like... $1,024.16. The funny part of it is a huge part of it was drugstore. I mean, just like, it's mind blowing what you are able to accomplish with seasonal panning challenges. So come on in and join them because it's, it's great to have those short bursts if you feel um, burdened wearing the same products on a regular basis. And if you don't finish things, it's great. You can put them off to another seasonal um, panning challenge. I mean, I just, $1,024.16. I mean, it's ugh, crazy. So let me break down kind of how I got to that total. First category I needed to eliminate was cleansers. I did have a little bit of a backup stash. As far as cleansers, my favorite go-tos last year were the Philosophy Purity Made Simple. It's that plain yellow cleanser. It's great for all skin types. My husband loves it too. Um, we went through several bottles of that. And then also the Olay uh, Citrus Scrub. It comes in a long tube and it has its revitalizing citrus scrub. It's awesome. It smells like oranges. It has the little exfoliating beads. I was all about that last year. So in cleansers, it was $100.58 in, in my grand total of what I was able to finish. Then going into moisturizing sprays. I didn't use a whole lot of face lotions last year because I just, I don't like the way they feel on my skin. Um, they can make me break out and you really have to be careful with mineral oil and things. So I was all about moisturizing sprays last year. I still am this year, but my grand total in that was $144 even. And that was using things like Mac Fix Plus. I went through several bottles of that. So back to Mac bag is filling up nicely. Then I went through um, two bottles of the Evian Facial Mist that you can get at Ulta and Sephora. They come in like really big cans. Um, then I went through the Mario Badescu Rose Water uh, Spray. I went through two of those. And then I went on and counted the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer Water in this category. And then I had the very beginning of the year, it wasn't much, but in one of the panning challenges, I put a Caudalie um, Elixir. It was a one ounce size. Ooh, I remember that stuff smelled strong, but that was like one of the first um, items in a panning challenge that I did back in 2015. And then as far as body wash, like I said, I had a backup stash last year. I no longer have a backup stash. I am buying them one at a time, but over the course of all of 2015, I went through $46.92 in body wash. Um, I had a backup stash in Dove body wash. I pretty much went through the winter care um, the uh, pistachio cream, um, the cucumber one, and then the pomegranate. It has like the blue, and I want to say I went through one more. I don't remember off the top of my head. And then I also went through two of the Olay uh, body washes. One of them was in crisp pear, and the other one was in mango and like white champagne or something like that. And then um, lastly, two bottles of the Caress. I want to say passionate spell. It's the red caress body wash that has a very autumnal, 
unisex scent to it. Um, then as far as primers, I finished a grand total of $65.89 in makeup primers. And at first I was a little bit surprised at that total until I realized I'd forgotten I went through the NYX Photogenique primer in one of the seasonal painting challenges and that sucker was like 15 bucks. Um, and then I also used my Maybelline Master Blur in the pink one. That was the one I thought smelled like conditioner. Um, and then the Monistat Chafing Relief Powder Gel. I counted a L'Oreal BB Cream in as kind of a primer. Um, and then I wanna say I went through, oh, a Rimmel primer and I went through a Wet n Wild coverall primer. So that was pretty much how I got to that total. Then as far as foundations, I finished $114.51 worth of foundation and that was between, the only high-end foundation I had last year was the IT Cosmetics CC Plus Illumination Cream. The rest of it was all drugstore between the CoverGirl Outlast Stay Fabulous Foundation, um, the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Matte Foundation. I went through two tubes of that. And then I had what was left of the tube of the CoverGirl Stay Gorgeous Foundation. And I want to say that was about it, I think. Because CoverGirl Outlast Stay, Fab Stay Fabulous was definitely the foundation that I consistently went back to over last year. Then, as far as powders, I finished a total of $96.67. A lot of these were high-end. The first one I kind of went through high-end-wise was the... Um, NARS Translucent Crystal Setting Powder. I went through a sample of the Tarte Amazonian Clay Smooth Operating Powder. I went through the IT Cosmetics Bye Bye Pores Pressed Setting Powder. And then I had what was left of the CoverGirl Advanced Radiance Powder and the CoverGirl Stay Gorgeous Powder. So, wow, I went through quite a bit of powder last year now that I think about it. But then as far as blush and bronzer, this category is gonna be really small, $39. And the reason I came to that total is because I finished the uh, Too Faced Chocolate Soleil Deluxe Size Sample. Wow, I've been working on Hoola a long time. Wow. I guess we're coming up on a year, if not a year. Yeah, I think that bronzer's gonna take me like 18 months, like that Bare Minerals. Whew, commitment. But anyways, back to the the category, I finished a full pan of the NARS Blush and Sin. That was a $30 blush. And then um, I rounded out the Too Faced sample to be about nine bucks, because that's about how much you pay when you go to the little um, kiosk thing at Sephora and Ulta to pick up something like that. Then next, let's go into eye primer. I finished a grand total of $3.99. And that was because it took me all last year to get through the Wet n Wild Fergie Take on the Day eye primer. That really kind of puts things into perspective if you have a huge stash of, of eye primers because it takes about a year to get through one of them. So <sighs> that Urban Decay one's going to be taking a long time too. <laughs> but um, then eyeshadow wise, I went through a grand total of $51.52 and that is between completely panning out the Lorac Pro. I panned several shades out of the Lorac Mega Pro because I panned cream, white, and stone. I hit pan and more shades than that, and then I completely finished the Too Faced Like a Virgin shade from the Naked Eyes palette. So it doesn't seem like a lot when you put a number value on it, but when you see physically how much eyeshadow I went through, I'm very proud and pleased with the progress that I made in whittling down my collection. Then lip products. I really am thrilled with where I got to in this category. Um, I finished a grand total of $62.37, and that is between panning the Revlon Kissable Balm Stain in the shade Darling. That was in my first project pan of 2015, and then I went through a shade of the Revlon Super Lustrous Lipstick in the shade Berry Hot. Um, then it was the mauve phase. I know during the summer I panned the Bite Beauty Lip uh, crayon in the shade rhubarb because that was when I was wearing garnet and amber rush and then I finished the Too Faced La Creme lipstick in the shade pink chocolate along with the NYX. On top of finishing that amount in lipstick I also went through my collection and I got rid of the shades that I needed to toss because they were expired or they had changed color or I flat out just came out of denial in the fact that I'm not going to wear them. So overall I had to downsize about $400 worth of lipstick and lip gloss that was just flat out old. Like all the stuff that I have now is very current. 
um, usable, like I only have a couple of lip glosses, I'm gonna need to do an updated makeup inventory. That's what this boils down to. But um, I did have to downsize several hundred dollars worth in lipstick alone and gloss because it was just, it was flat out rancid. So um, I'm very pleased with where this has gone and it's really kind of helped me to focus in to not buy additional lip products in the future. I did receive some at Christmas, but it's really helped me to stay away from being tempted to buy new lip products. So bonus in that direction. Then as far as cream shadow, I finished a total of $23.48 and that is between using two um, NYX Jumbo Eye Pencils in the shade Milk. I went through a um, deluxe sample of the Laura Mercier Caviar Stick in the shade Moonlight. And I got down to the very last little bit of my Maybelline Color Tattoo in Tough as Taupe, but I did have to throw it out because it completely went tacky and then dried out on me. So there was only, you know, a couple weeks worth of usage, but I went on and added it to my empties um, after using what I could with the shade Slate last year. And then going into concealer, I finished a grand total of $17.13, and that is just between using the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Eraser for Dark Circles and the Brightening Shade. Holy grail status with that one. And then I branched out and I tried the Maybelline Dream Lumi uh, Twist Up Pen in Light, I believe was the shade. I was not a fan of that. Then mascara. This category is gonna sound really big, it was a grand total of $96.34, but I did not use $96.34 worth of mascara. Um, I found a continuous problem that every time I would go into my backup stash and open up tubes of mascara, they would be completely dried out. So that is something to be mindful of. It is one of the number one problems we have as makeup collectors, because even if we don't open them, they may not necessarily hold out for the long term for us. So you might want to go through and check your mascaras and if you've had them for over you know two years chuck them even if you haven't opened them because it's it's a moot point at this point but um as far as mascara i did completely go through the clinique high impact is it the chubby lash mascara it comes in the long silver tube and then i went through three samples completely of the mac uh, faux lash Mascara, I really love that. I should probably just bite the bullet and buy a full size of that. Um, and then as far as like mascaras I had in my backup stash, I had a bunch of samples that I had to throw out. And then I went through quite a few drugstore mascaras. Like the ones that stick out in my mind are the L'Oreal Butterfly Intensa. Um, the, what was the CoverGirl one that came in the teal tube that was kind of a, it was a flat comb brush. And then I had a couple of Maybelline mascaras that I was trying out, and I want to say I tried like one more Miss Manga from L'Oreal. That one was dried out when I bought it. Um, but, you know, just kind of where I'm going with that. And then next category I have is eyeliners. I finished a total of $19.98 in that, and that was from painting the L'Oreal Infallible Liner in the shade Slate when I first started Slate back in January of 2015. And then I panned the NYX eyeliner in the shade Purple Violet as I panned the shade Deep Purple from the Lorac Pro. And then I also went through a Maybelline Line Stiletto because I kind of went through my collection. I wanted to eliminate some of my, my black liners that I had. So three liners there, very pleased with my progress. And I almost was able to count my NYX um, liner in the shade dark brown but i'm not quite finished with that yet so hopefully that's going to be in my 2016 empties um and then kind of my last two categories i have beauty tools that counts for beauty blenders that i used because i went through i i changed my beauty blenders out about every three months i wash them every time i use them so really after about three months they start breaking down so i went through three beauty blenders and a real technique sponge I went through several Clarisonic brush heads and I also went through several eyelash curlers because I did have, one of them broke and then one of them I left when I went traveling and then I had to replace the padding on another one. So that's kind of where, I, that was $126.78 in um, <clears throat> beauty tools. And I did not count the soap that I bought to buy my, or I did not count the soap total that I used to wash my beauty blenders. I just counted that as part of like toiletries with toothpaste and, you know, um, hand soap and all that. So that's not in this. 
Um, and then lastly, I went through three perfume samples. I pretty much gave that an amount of about 15 bucks because each perfume sample is about $5. So I went through two samples of the um, Elizabeth and James Nirvana white and then a Miss Dior perfume sample. So like I said, that is what seasonal panning can do for you. <laughs> I mean, it's just like, that's a lot. It's over a hundred products that are just gone from my makeup collection. So I am so excited to share that with you, how that plays into my goals this year. Um, I went through a lot of makeup, but I still brought in some because I had myself on a no buy last year. I flat out was not ready to go on a no buy. Um, I'm more ready this year and what I'm thinking of doing, I'm not going to officially put myself on a no buy. I guess I should just call it a low buy because I, I tend to do a lot better if I don't, um, I guess put a name to it. I get, you know what I mean? Like when I put out the no buy last year, I had great intentions and I did not buy a lot of makeup, but I still brought in quite a few palettes um, because I bought the Too Faced Matte Eyes palette and I bought the um, the Too Faced Chocolate Bonbons palette, even though I have sent that back, so I no longer have it. But I bought a couple other things during the year that I was, like the NYX Mermaid and um, I'm trying to think what else I bought, the Lorac Mega Pro 2 palette. So, I mean, I wasn't ready. Um, this year I am more ready for it because I really came to terms with things when I had to declutter my rancid lip products. Um, I've also come to terms with it because I'm continuing to find dupes like for mauve shades like this looks like my Project Pan lipstick currently. I'm going through Glossé for the Finish 7 by Spring, but this lip color I have on now looks pretty similar and it's the Milani lipstick in the shade Rose Femme. So it's just, once again, finding more and more and more of the same in my collection. And I'm really starting to feel that way about my eyeshadows too. So I'm hoping that it really makes a difference in me not being tempted to buy a bunch of things this year. So I don't know, I'll, I'll go into a video kind of on what I'm thinking for a beauty budget and things like that because putting myself on a straight no buy was, I was not ready for it flat out. So that's about it. Thank you for taking the time to sit down and watch this. I take total of your empties, <laughs> like take stock, even if you don't keep the actual products, take stock of what you finish, kind of watch back your videos and your Instagram photos of what you finish each month and run up a total because you will be surprised at how much you are capable of moving out from your collection. And like I said, $1,024.16 not only does that feel good, but that makes me feel a little bit better about making that decision to go shop and buy, you know, higher end makeup because now I, I see that I'm capable of using it when I can do that with a great mix of drugstore and high end products. So have a fantastic weekend. I've got lots coming your way next week. So I look forward to seeing you soon. Catch you later.